Hi, I'm Jay Teske. I'm the owner of Jay Teske Leather Co. in Kingston, New York. Hi, I'm Hadass. I'm Jay's wife. I'm down here with them sometimes. Uh, all right, so we're going to spend some time going over some of the products we make and um, uh, the leathers that we use, and I'm going to give you a little shop tour. Um, so we'll start off with the leather that we use in-house. Uh, it comes from one tannery in Pennsylvania. Uh, there's only two tanneries left in the U.S. that produce this type of leather. Um, there's English bridal leather, uh, harness leather, and we use People have different names for it. Um, a lot of people call it carving leather or skirting leather. It's basically the same thing. Um, all the leathers are vegetable tan, which is important. There's no chemicals used. The process takes much longer than it does uh, for, for a chemical tannage. Um, for example, typical upholstery leather, which is chrome tan for the most part, takes about three to four days to tan, whereas this type of leather takes a month at least. So this is a, an example of natural veg tan leather. Um, this patinas very well over time. It has no coating on it, so the sun, any any hand oils that it picks up changes it. So this one, that, here's one that's in the process of being changed. It has a lot of marks. In yeah, so let it. me tell them about this too, because I uh, worked in a hospital and I used to, I needed a way to have like a little pad, my phone, my business cards. And so I would actually just hold this and I would bring it everywhere with me. And so you could see um, how it's darker where I held it both on top when I would hold it like this and on the bottom. And then, um, you know, there was some water spots over the years. There's like a few pen marks on here. But I absolutely love this. And this started as pink um, as this and aged over time. And this was um, for three years. So and it will still age. It will age into a beautiful dark brown over time. Uh, if that's not, the, not something you like, there's pre-dyed leather. So this is an English bridal leather. Leather. So they all start off as as veg tan, right? So they pull them out. They're like this. Any process after that makes it a different leather. So there's different oils incorporated and dye, obviously, into the English bridal leather. So here's a tan, um, which kind of looks like what this turns into. Um, these will also patina a little darker here and there, um, but it, it's never like like the regular uh, natural veg tan. There's, this is the same thing, English black bridal leather. Um, and there's a medium brown, which is a little darker. I don't know, the lighting in here is kind of bad. And then there's also harness leather. Harness leather is what we make our swings out of. We do a lot of hand rails in them as well. Uh, it's a very tough leather. There's a lot of oils and waxes stuffed into it during the process. So it makes it weather resistant. Um, it also patina as well as it picks up your hand, hand oils and uh, just little marks that would make it darker. Um, so those are the leathers that we normally work with. We do occasionally work with other leathers that are specced for different projects that you might have. Um, a lot of architects or designers will use um, a certain leather for the upholstery and they want to incorporate that into handrails or the uh, door poles. Um, and we're open to that. We just need a sample so that we can test it through our machines and make sure everything works correctly. Um, so Brad is asking, can you accelerate natural leather aging? Very good question. Yes, you can. Um, you can sunbathe it, like on a day like today. Um, or you can, well, you could also add oils to it, like mink oil. Um, there's Neat's foot oil. Mink oil is probably the easiest one to find. You can get it at um, pretty much any pharmacy will have it in the shoe care aisle. Um, so you just soak it on there, and then you could just leave it like that, which will make it darker. But as the oils dissipate and or penetrate into it, it will lighten back up again. Um, so that's where the sun would come in. The sun, it, it's skin. So it, and I, some people don't want to think of it like that, but it is. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm darker than it, though. Um, so yeah, it'll suntan. It'll tan from the sun, but you can speed it up. All right. Do you want to show? I think we should move this just because it's pretty bad lighting. So, yeah. um, do you want to show here your pull? You have? Oh, yeah. So this is this is uh, a new product that we're putting out for the show. Let me see if I can lift it up. The, the wood is very heavy. So this is our double-sided door pull, right? So there's it's back to back. There's one on either side, um, and this is a case where a client wanted to use an upholstery leather. So I took some leftover and I made a display with it just to show that we can use other people's leather as well. This is a, a hand tipped, so it's lighter gray with darker gray um, spots on it basically. 
and I, I don't know if you can really tell from the from the uh, video, but um, it's all brass. We blackened this brass, so you know we primarily work with brass, but there's other finishes that we can also add. So this one's br blackened brass, and it has a lacquer finish, so it has a shine to it. Um, and then on the other side, uh, I just did the blackened brass with n with no finish on it. Um, just to show the differences between the two. Personally, I like brass with no finish. I like to let it patina the way the leather would. Um, so, you know, natural brass will turn to a brown color over time. Um, and then, then again, if you want it to shine it up, there's no finish on it, so you can also shine it back up to a high gloss if, if you felt like it. Um, so those are the new, new item. The new item. Um, and I'm, I'll show you a couple different style handrails that we do. This one's a flat wrapped. Uh, we also call it the channel wrapped because there's a kerf cut along the whole entire handrail that the leather is stuffed into. And then there's a filler piece that goes in. And that gives you the nice, long, clean look. Um, we also have a spiral wrap. This one is actually a big old door pole. So we left the ends exposed and blackened the steel. Um, this is made out of the English harness leather. And then on the end, end there, there's a little detail of it tucked in there. And then next we have a braided handrail there. I think actually the further you go, it's better. Well, no, I kind of, yeah, yeah. get some light in that lens. Yeah. You can see that. So this is a uh, sample of a, a braided rail that I did recently. Um, designers give me the, the specs of the, the diameter of the rail, and then I have to take some strips uh, and figure out how wide they need to be in order to close any gaps and keep everything uh, covered up there. So, you know, as the diameter increases, you can either increase the number of the strips or the width of it and decrease the number. So we just play around with it a little bit before we actually start the project to see what looks best aesthetically. And then I have one more that's just a hand. This is a combination of hand stitched and machine stitch. As you can see, it's another smooth one, but this is a metal substrate. So we can't cut a kerf into it because uh, it would it would uh, messes up the integrity of the, the, the pole. So what we do here is we run a, a stitch on the sewing machine up across each seam, each side of the leather. And then we take a hand stitch uh, needle, curved needle for this one. And we just go back and forth uh, to give like a little bit of a box stitch there. And that's about, there's other styles of hand stitching. We can do, um, we've been doing a lot of baseball stitching actually, which is, uh, you know, just like a baseball it has one going up this way and one going up that way. Um, yeah. So these are... Do you want to take a walk back to the metal lathe? Okay. Brad is asking about a stencil, which I think maybe we can come back for when you are hand tooling leather, come back to here, but maybe if we, Take a little tour. Okay. And come back to yeah. Let's try to go to the back. It's uh, <laughs> this is the cleanest part of the shop, so it looks impressive. But it's the further back you this go. This is our son. What? That's what he's doing right now. Producer, yeah. <laughs> our little guy. Oh, we can stop here. Here's um, I still use some machines that are very old. This one's from I think the 1800s. They use this in the uh, shoe industry, uh, but it's also good for other things. This it's the thing. There's there's not you know one machine that's only made for one industry. You can, they, with, in the leather industry, there's there's a little back and forth, you know, like I don't make shoes, obviously, but this is helpful in a lot of other ways. I use it to make our swing. Um, there's one part of the, the swing that has to be folded over and the leather is so thick that it doesn't really work well on my uh, powered skiving machine. So I use this, actually, give me a little, is there anything in here later on now? And someone's what asking too, if you know any sources of Russia leather or modern equivalents. Russia leather from Russia? <laughs> I've never heard of it, to be honest with you. Jen, can you ask, uh, tell us what you mean by Russia leather? Okay. So I'm just going to show you real quick. So this is a very thick piece of leather here. Uh, if you fold it, you can see it doesn't doesn't lay flat. You, what you can do is take a mallet and pound it down, but then there's a chance of the, the fibers cracking on the edge. So what this machine does, okay, you can see it. Thread it through like this. And this is called the skive. You can see the difference there, how thick it is here, and it gets thinner there. Um, and now you can fold it easier. 
see. Um, normally, with since this is so thick, I can either adjust the machine to cut it down a little more, or now it's thin enough that I can run it through my uh, power skyver. So let's, let's look at that real quick. So of course, it's we're, we're in the middle of a heat wave. Oh, let me turn that off. And and our air conditioner unit broke, so it's kind of in front of me right now. Hope we can work around that. So this is a power skyver. We use this. <laughs> Let me just move the air conditioner out of the way. Um, so what you do with this, it's it's a bell knife. There's a, a a blade in here that's shaped like a cup almost, and it spins. And there's a, a wheel down here that feeds it into the blade. There's a lot less friction that way, and it gives you a lot smoother cut rather than taking this leather and pushing it into a blade, which is what the other one was doing. So I'll just run this through real quick and show you. Get it on there. Okay. Now you can probably even see there's three different thicknesses there. This is the full thickness. That's the thickness that the hand crank took off. And here's the power one. And now it's so thin that it's like buttery soft at this point. You can just push it down with your fingers. And that's how I do a lot of seams because if you take leather on leather that's this thick, it starts bulking up. So for handrails, any any type of leather work you want, you want your seams to lay flat rather than bump up. All right, we also have some know, hand uh, hydraulic presses here. We use that for some of the hardware that you have to press in. There's some sewing machines. Here's uh, this is a lighter weight machine that I use for some smaller leather goods. And then we have a saddlery machine. That's the next one over down there. Um, that that goes through the bigger things, bigger items like the uh, the swing, which is it's probably about 20 ounces of leather once everything's put together, so that's pretty thick. All right, let's go back here to the middle of the shop. Our shop's from 1893, so it's a work in progress. Uh, over here we have a hydraulic clicker press. I do work for manufacturers as well, like components of their items. Um, so when we're doing quantity, we do get these big old steel cookie cutters they're called clicker dies, uh, made up so that we can cut them out. I don't know if anybody's ever tried to cut a circle out of paper. It's pretty near impossible. So this makes it a lot easier. Um, just a big press comes up, stamps it down, and we move on to other parts of it. So here in the back is the metal lay that we use. This is what we've been working uh, on to produce all of our brass hardware. Um, a lot of it's custom work, so this is a good machine to do one-offs. Um, it's not really set up for, for, for doing multiples. Uh, if we get a larger order, we have to bring in some help to, to fill in the numbers there. But um, again, I do a lot of custom work. So if you send me specs, I can fill the order using your, your da data sheet. That's this big old guy. Um, so Aaron's asking if there were many iterations of the swing before we landed on the final design. There were. The, the problem is finding hardware that would work for it. Um, the, like the D-rings were, you know, a, a tough thing to find. Or I could have went with a rope underneath to hold it instead, but then I was worrying about if you have a, a rope looped around from the pressure of you sitting on it, it's going to start to pull up on the leather and try to make it buckle in. So I figured the D-ring takes away all that stress. And then the clasps, we wanted to make sure that they're removable so that you can take the swing inside and it doesn't have to stay outside all year. Um, we have a prototype that we let, it's been outside for two years now. Uh, it patinas because that. it's out. Well, <laughs> Time I'm being flies. gracious. Uh, <laughs> it does, it patinas, but it looks really great. Uh, again, we don't leave it out. We condition it maybe, maybe once or twice a year, if that, like when we remember to, and it's, it's held up wonderfully. Um, but again, you can take it in very easily if you don't want it to sit outside. So I think why don't we go over into that space anyway and show the swing. And meanwhile, Jen talked about the rush alert. She said it's red, crosshatched. Reindeer hide. Reindeer hide on or reindeer. There's no end. 18th, 19th century furniture, books, etc. No. No, I haven't heard that, but I'm curious. <laughs> I'll have to look it up after the video. <laughs> All right, you want me to? Yes. Step there. Work in progress, this thing. All right, so we'll go up into the showroom. 
little air conditioner, man. Get to that kind of. Um, here's a, a heat press we use as a stamp logo, Zen. It's a, again a very old machine, but it still works fine. Where did you get the heat press from? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a very exciting story. <laughs> I, a lot of this stuff comes from um, um, book binders, uh, a company that binds books. Uh, the Skyver came from that, the Power Skyver. This most likely did, because that's all that really used. They use it a lot for uh, print typing. Um, but we, I, since it heats up, you can pretty much brand leather. And there's different foils you can put on it as well to give it, I don't have any laying around, but you can have a black foil, silver foil, gold foil, all that sort of thing. And here is our showroom. And here's another good example of uh, the, we did this whole thing in veg tan Actually, leather. Actually, maybe it's better um, this way. So it started off as that really light tan color. And as you can see, it's starting to get darker, warm, yeah. yeah. We have a lot of sun coming in here in the morning, though, so it's speeds it up. And I, I boiled this as well. So do you want to talk about the swing a little bit? Yeah, uh, here's a swing. It's made from English, uh, the har harness leather, sorry. Uh, it's a black one, and here's the brass hardware that I was talking about earlier, the D-rings. And then we have these clasps that simply just swing open, and you can take the swing down. The rope is polyester, so it's it's good outside. Um, you don't have to worry about bringing that in. And we get the, the brass will patina to a browner color over time, unless you sit there and polish it <laughs> to each their own. Uh, here's some of yeah. our cabinet tree poles. So this is all part of our product line. Um, we do custom work and we have these. Um, we can make them in different lengths or different thicknesses. Again, the, the pretty much the possibilities are endless. Um, here's brass hardware. We also have the, the hardware in stainless. And then we can show you that, again, the difference between the natural leathers over here is a lighter one. This one has been oiled in, in the sun a lot longer. And we have some handrails on the top as well. Someone's asking if there's any type of oil that would not be good on leather that would dry it out. Uh, yeah, well, like motor oil. <laughs> it has other chemicals in it. But mink oil, I've seen people use olive oil, but I've seen also some people complain about the smell of it. Um, I don't know. I've never used it before. Um, but personally, I use Neat's foot oil. You might not be able to find that unless you order it online. They use it a lot in the equestrian industry. Uh, and saddle well, saddle shops and stuff like that. But the mink oil you can definitely find locally. Um, and that's just as good. Yeah. All right, so these are the five poles that we actually have on um, the Field and Supply shop. And this is a really good example of the, do you wanna bring that swatch, the pink swatch, so they could see how it's tanned over time. Um, so this is a little bit bleached from our sun. This we have put mink oil on to oil it. Um, these are standard pulls. These I love because they're just so classic. And so here Jay brought an example. So it starts off um, pretty pink and then the sun will start changing it. And then as you're using it, the oils, your hands, um, oils will come out and it will start patinaing it. So that happens with the natural leather. Our brown and our black leather stays consistent and solid over time. So that's not going to happen. So a lot of people, when they get it for their kitchens, ask, well, what's going to happen? Um, so the leather that we're using does have oils and a finish already on it. So you can, if like, let's say you got, you were making pancakes and you touched and you got some pancake batter, you would just be able to wipe it off with a damp rag. Um, so it does hold up in kitchens pretty well. Um, these are just our ex the examples in black. Um, this is the spiral wrapped handle. It's called the helix handle. This is our planar handle. And over here, this is our hand stitched uh, radial handle. So it's a brass tube on the inside and then it's hand stitched over here on the ends. Oh, you know what? Here's a perfect example of taking something, a product that we have and somebody else um, wanting to use it for something else. So uh, cabinet pull, I'm uh, not cabinet pulls, refrigerator pulls. Some of them you require a lot of force to open them because the suction of them. My father-in-law is a great example of that. The kids have to get their backs and <laughs> open it. Um, I wouldn't really recommend the thickness of this <clears throat> cabinet pull, which is meant for something that's pretty easy to open. So what I did is I just beefed it up. There's, it's constructed uh, with a thicker steel core through it. Um, so this uh, is definitely good for the pull of a, a refrigerator. Um, but we also have our leather shelves. Uh, 
we have we have the standoffs or the support, sorry, in brass and stainless, and that the core is made out of tempered glass, and they're available up to about seven feet long. With our brackets, <clears throat> the maximum width is about eight and three quarters wide. If you use a different bracket that can support the weight of it, you can go a lot wider. Um, I think up to two feet wide would probably be about the max, but it's a pretty big shelf. Do you want to lift it up maybe and just show the hand, sure. brand, the hand, um, the details on the, I'm sorry, the words escaping my mind. <laughs> brackets, the brass brackets. No. Oh, the... no. oh yeah. So since there's a core in here, we have to sew it together though, right? So the, the glass is in the middle. There's filler spaces that take up <clears throat> about half an inch all around. And then we stitch the whole thing together on that big old sewing machine back there. Um, and then all the edges have to be sanded so they're all smooth and flush. And then they're waxed and hand burnished. Uh, burnish is a process basically of just taking a rag or you can use a bone if you have one laying around. <laughs> uh, but they use bones. Uh, just rubbing it back and forth and it makes the, the waxes sink into the leather and gives a really smooth finish. We do a lot of hand burnishing on, on, on the products because the leather is so thick you have to sand it. And at that point, there's a pretty rough edge, or yeah, I'd say rough edge, uh, and the waxes and really help pound everything down and give you a nice smooth finish. I do like the difference. Can you just show the difference between like hand painting? Like if you would have painted this, it would have been solid versus done yeah. burnishing. Yeah. See, that's the great thing about this. People think it's wood because there's a there's almost a grain to it because each layer of leather still has its top coat on it, so it has a dye. So the difference, the tones in, in between the layers really give it a natural look. Um, not so much with the black, obviously, because it's all solid color here. Um, painting, which a lot of larger companies will do to, like, say, their handbags and stuff, um, it covers all of that up. But there is a chance of that falling off over time because it's, it's just a paint. Um, the great thing about this is if something bumps into it or it gets a little roughed up, you can take a candle or any kind of wax, just put it on there and take an old rag and just rub it real quick and it buffs back out to the way it was. Brad's asking if it's cumbersome sewing those on the machine. <laughs> These aren't so bad because it's flat and there's an attachment that can go on my, my machine that makes it a flat bed. So that's not so bad. The swing is difficult because when I sew them together, I try to keep them a little curved. Uh, in the shape that they're going to be in because if you just take it and lay it flat when you do curve it up you'll get a lot of wrinkles into it um, so yeah when I sew there in this position oh so when you're sewing it it's a little bit more cumbersome that's interesting the swing versus the yeah oh well, there's also a lot of clamps in place while I'm sewing them because everything has to be held like say the middle of the top layer has to be in the middle of the bottom because if, every, if it, everything starts to get out of whack when you it'll be all twisted and gnarled up when it comes out of the sewing machine someone's asking if you've uh how come glass core rather than wood very good question uh in order to have a piece of wood that wouldn't flex it would have had to have been very thick i've, I've tried thin plywood i've tried a uh, composite of abs plastic and wood it, it adhered together it doesn't work um so then i just thought of glass uh, and tempered glass won't shatter, right? So it's actually the glass is made for shelving. So we're just encasing it into leather. And how do you source your leather and hides? The hides that we use in the in our shop that we offer are all from the same tannery. It's Wicket and Craig out of Pennsylvania. It's the best tannery I've ever worked with. Their hides are very clean. There's not a lot of bug bites, scar marks, or anything like that. Um, the steers are coming from the U.S.-Canada border where it's very cold, um, and that reduces the number of insect bites on the cows. If you get a hide from – Argentina is really big on, on um, leather. If you get a hide from them and compare it to the Wiccan and Craig leather, it's night and day. There's a lot of insect bites on the ones from South America um, and a lot of uh, – scars uh, from barbed wire and things like that. Brad's asking if you've ever considered scaling up the swing to a hammock, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of leather, so that you'd be laying on a whole cow. 
<laughs> Look, I, I have thought about other ideas for the swing, making like um, kind of like those big cages that you see too, that you see. It's not a cage. It's like that big. Nah, um, cage is the wrong, <laughs> wrong word. <laughs> you think, what do you want to call it? A capsule? Yeah. You know, like the wicker ones you know, that you see. Yeah. You sit in like a one. nest almost. <laughs> um, but I haven't had time to mess around with that idea yet, but it's in there. But you know what else too? I, I always this is I always push Jay to do is like those two. If you had two me, big metal um, rings, yeah, and then you put just leather on the inside, it would be like half hammock, half swing. So maybe that would be well, a good yeah, choice. the next fill and supply. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> for October. Yeah. Jen sent you the link for the leather, so that's oh, good. Awesome. Brad said doing, yes. She's doing, she's doing all my work. For me. Great. Yeah, so we'll, we can look up that leather. Um, and how about a braided leather hammock? Oh, my God. Oh, we're going crazy. Braiding takes a really long time. <laughs> a really long time. They're pushing you to the edge. We, uh, I just did a braided handrail in Martha's Vineyard. It was about 80 feet. 80 feet. Yeah. And it took seven days to do. Yeah. Seven days of, uh, what, 10-hour days. Right. And actually, so, that's a good one to talk about film supply because we made that connection. It's Mika. Um, she's a, a interior designer that we made the connection at Field and Supply. So thank you. And um, that was great because you've done a, a lot of projects with her. And we got to go to Martha's Vineyard during quarantine and yeah. get out of the house. So that was really awesome. We wore masks, though. We were very <laughs> yeah. careful. Right, so, so I think, yeah, are there any other questions that you guys have at all? We have a few minutes left. I wonder, um, we're kind of a little brain dead from the heat because our air conditioner's yeah, not that, working. Yeah, as I showed you before, the air conditioner's <laughs> on the floor, which isn't where it's supposed to be. So oh, Brad's asking if there's anything you haven't done yet that you want to. I know how to answer that, but I wonder if you, what you do. I don't have anything in my mind, but I'll tell you, like, some of the things that people approach me with are very unique, so um, that's exciting. You know, it's like, why didn't I think of that kind of deal? But uh, yeah, I like working on new things. That's why I do, uh, you know, I started with the leather and then I incorporated some wood with some things, some items, and now I'm doing a lot of the, the metal work myself. I keep things new and fresh. And I would answer that, um, I would love for Jay to start making shoes. Oh, I thought it was handbags. No, I'm on oh, yeah. handbags. I know you're After 10 that. years, she's uh, stopping, more, more she's stopping with the handbags. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, you, he's really shown an interest in shoes, and how awesome would that be? We have a, a drumstick bag. Um, I don't know how many people have asked me to do drumstick, drumstick bag, bag, but I just, unfortunately, to, to sit down and figure all that out, which it's not the uh, the type of thing that I'm, I'm concentrating on, it's just, it's too much at the, t at the moment. But who knows? <laughs> you know, I never know. It's going to happen next year. Maybe one day. All right. That, do it all. <laughs> I'm trying. That's the problem. I try to do everything, but yeah, it's just hard. Well, thank you guys so much for um, tuning in and seeing our shop with us. It was fun to show you around. We have more comments. But do you work alone in your shop, Aaron? Uh, uh, most of the time, unless I have a larger order, I need some help. Uh, and we have a and employees to keep the open. But for most most of the time, it's me. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, that was so much. Yeah.